Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Lift your hands everywhere and bless the name of the Lord. Thank Him for His wonder-walking power in our midst. Thank Him for the miracles, the signs, the wonders. Thank Him for bringing performance to His Word. A grateful person is giving thanks tonight. Now ask Him to use you greatly and to prepare you for what he desires to use you for even tonight pray that he will use you greatly that you will not just celebrate miracles and testimonies but that you will become that vessel that he can use you have my everything you have my everything you have my everything you have my everything Take all of me, all of me, Lord Take all of me, all of me, Lord You have my everything Anoint my everything Use my everything I release my everything Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. My everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all. a tool for your glory someone who is passionately in love with Jesus is praying Take a minute to try this from the depth of your heart. Shabelada kaparada balakata bras. Kebrandege baratus yate. Take everything. All that you have given me, let it be used for your glory. Eba shate brantes kaligrate maratus ebrestietas. Are you still praying? Baratus Kalibrande Kebaratus Kia de Baladaba. Jesus' name we pray. 
let me tell you this when you make up your mind to invest in his presence there's no limit to what your life can become there are things that only his presence can bring his presence is beyond brain work his presence is beyond the wisdom of men are we together now so when we take out time to soak in his presence like this it is part of your becoming it is part of the training process it's not just whiling away time before the word comes it is how it happens that sometimes we just allow you in his presence and something happens to you as you behold him something happens as you allow that glory you cannot give definition to what is happening to your spirit man but one thing for sure is like a hen resting over the eggs you will think the hen is just staying there but something is happening it is not the hen changing it is the egg that is changing are we together now you will think because the hen is resting the rest does not have an effect on the hen she's the mother not sharing the egg and it's amazing that she does not need to crack the egg to know what is happening right from there the hen knows that something is happening this is what is happening to you frail you weak you ignorant you but honest you opened you yielded you this is what is happening to you now i'll stand with hearts on and head abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender all I am is yours. All I am is yours. All I am is yours. Truly all I am is yours. becomes his property in experience then he will walk wonders out of your life he will cause you to be a living wonder not a dead person who is being spoken about by those who are alive that in your lifetime you will see the glory of God manifested through your life a sign and a wonder men will look for various names to call you as a description of the wonder working power of God some will call you ministers of our God some will call you the great power of God <laughs> others will call you an expression of God's wisdom do you believe this this is what is happening to you remember that you are staying something is happening to you in that glory a man of God is being made in that glory an intercessor is being made in that glory are we together a battle axe is being made in that glory there is a sharpening there is a chiseling there is a making there is a breaking there is a remolding doesn't matter if it's pleasant or unpleasant it works together for your making I'd like you to pray in one minute tonight everything you have prepared for me oh God I open up my spirit to receive everything that includes those who are following from across the globe pray that prayer from your heart all that you have prepared for me all that you have prepared for me I open up my heart to receive tonight 
every time we gather in your presence it is because we trust you we trust what you're doing in our lives we trust what we are becoming we trust that you are furnishing us in righteousness and helping us to become accurate portraits you're causing us to step into the graces that have been preordained for us you're causing us to access the wisdom of the spirit and tonight we have come again we have come to listen speak oh god we have come to learn teach us we have come to be made build us we have come to be empowered energize our spirits and our minds and i pray in the name of jesus that at the end of tonight's service it will be evident that we encountered the god of heaven we vow to give you all the glory in jesus mighty name we pray please be seated god bless you good evening everybody hallelujah it's good to have everyone in the presence of god tonight and we thank god for the mighty testimonies you know i really get humbled when i hear people come to the altar and just testify and i watch for myself the wonder walking power of god's word the things that he can do when men believe him the things that he can do when men believe him the things that he can do when men decide to trust him and sometimes to trust him against all odds to trust him in spite of let me speak a word of hope over someone listen the bible says surely there is an end it doesn't matter what you have gone through it doesn't matter how long I can assure you use the testimonies tonight and prophesy to yourself that the Bible says surely the word surely means certainly certainly there is an end if you ever saw the beginning of that challenge be rest assured you will see the end and you will see the end sooner than you planned the end means the end of barrenness the end means the end of shame the end means the end of begging and borrowing and reproach of any and all sorts. The Bible leaves us with a scripture of comfort. It says, surely there is an end. Let the mockers mock while you trust. Let the naysayers commend while you trust. Your assignment is to fix your eyes on Jesus. Refuse to look at the winds and the waves. They will laugh while you are walking on water. But when you finally arrive, they will say truly, the spirit of Elijah dot rest upon Elisha. When you are making progress with your life, you must know that focus is of essence. Nobody runs to win and is looking left and right. It doesn't matter whether they are cheering you or laughing at you. It is distraction the moment you have a goal before you. Nobody runs your Olympic intending to win and then he turns to see his family members waving and say you are making it. No. He can hear and that's enough to motivate him. Or turning to see other people say don't worry you will lose the race. Uh -uh. Both the people who cheer and the people who mock um, they, have, they have minimal effect once you are focused. But once you begin to turn to the left or the right then you are already off course naturally you will fail hallelujah i think i've shared with you here a very interesting story of a gentleman who was climbing a very high altitude and the ladder from if i recall the ladder he was using was not very strong and while he was climbing you know people were down others were most of them were trying to tell him get down that ladder may most likely uh, you know break and you will die you will not finish that race and when the person saw them um, he kept smiling at them he would look down smile at them and continued going up the people were angry they were trying to motion in various ways to say mr. man we're warning you the higher you go the more the assurance of your dying if you fall and at the end when he you know got to his height he suspected and um, they got to investigate the man and they found out he was deaf that was the reason why he got there so while they were speaking all that they were saying everything they were saying was subject to his interpretation he thought they were motivating him you can make it whereas they were telling him you are going to die his deafness was an advantage 
many of you your own becoming is that your ears are working well and not walking to the spirit of god walking because you want to hear everything and you've heard something that has become a virus to your progress i'm praying tonight everything you have received that has impeded your progress deflated your passion let it jump out as you hear the word tonight in the name of jesus christ one thing i know for sure is that the end of this journey with you and god is glory and grace the end of this journey with you and God is beauty and color. Amen. There's nothing the devil can do about it, provided he cannot distract your faith and focus. It is, it is for sure that you must become everything God preordained for you. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very quickly tonight, we're honored to have um, a number of pastors from House on the Rock. Let me just honor them, even though they come here every time. But we're a house of honor. Let me start with Reverend Yusuf Akila, House on the Rock, just an honor to have you around tonight, sir. Thank you. Pastor Mike Ako, House on the Rock, Bauchi. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Pastor Sam Doguri, House on the Rock, Gombe. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. We're really honored to have you uh, worship with us tonight. We do not take your presence for granted. In Jesus name just a few uh, important announcements first to let our family in the East know that I'll be coming to Enugu uh, on Wednesday so I'm in Enugu on Wednesday and um, gather everybody around Enugu and environs and I'll be sharing God's Word we'll be experiencing an outpouring of his spirit I believe that someone's season has come in the name of jesus you can get all the details on our social media platform house on the rock enugu it is and it's going to be a great time in the presence of god so tell someone to tell someone to tell everyone that jesus is ready to give all of us within the east a mighty encounter and um, to jesus be all the glory amen second announcement um, our medical team will this year again be having um, the outreach so we partner with a few doctors from John Hopkins and then a few other places and last year we used the opportunity to do a training for medical practitioners not just in this house but generally we open doors and then we're able to do the IVF program this year we're not going to do IVF again but we'll do a medical outreach and so our medical team will be doing a training we'll bring in all these professionals and we'll be having a one-day training for doctors pharmacists lab scientists just medics and paramedics um, so you want to be part of that um, that training at the end of the service unfortunately we're not going to allow for online booking we need people who book physically to know they are here. I'm not sure that they have a space for more than 500 attendants for the training. Um, it's a specialized training. They are going to be bringing a lot of information. So for those of you who are here, medical doctors here in Koinonia, Koinonia Global, you are open to apply. After the service, you can go to the medical stand, and I'm sure they have a provision where you write your name, the relevant details, and they will get to you accordingly. And then for those who are outside of Abuja but are sure you will make it, I'm sure that room will also be given so that you pen down your name, okay? So there's a QR code, you can scan that uh, and then make sure that we have. And please, if you do, make sure you'll be there because we make provisions for these people. So don't stop someone else from coming and then don't attend yourself, your medical doctor, your pharmacist, you know anything around medicine the practice make sure that um, but I think it's going to be a great one you will learn a lot and um, it will be an opportunity to grow network with strategic people transcontinentally and then build you know your network base your understanding and then the next day I think that should be a Friday the Saturday whichever day that is let me have the dates exact dates the Saturday will be an outreach um, a medical outreach we're going to 
be doing some outreach for several people, you know, drugs, treatments, and all of that. I promise that by next week, when they feed me with the exact details, I'll be up here again. It's, it's at the end of the month, this month, so we don't have a lot of time left, but I will make sure that the full details, uh, when I get all the details, I'll make sure that I announce it. But for now, we're interested in those who want to participate for the training. Please take advantage of it. I'm taking the time to announce now before the word, now that I have your attention, make sure after the service. And then for those who cannot make it, but you have people around, you can do well to let them know that this is what we're doing. As always, it's our contribution to strengthening people. I believe in building the whole man. It is our contribution. We're not just healing the sick physically, but we partner with our doctors to see that the medics are trained and then as many people are blessed and empowered. Are you happy about that? And so we thank God for the opportunity and the privilege to be able to do that. Again, next week I'll come up with a more comprehensive announcement uh, on the exact date and all the logistics as it is needed. For now, we need to go straight to the word. Can you pray one more time? Father, open my eyes. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to receive. Ready to learn. Ready to receive. From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will sing of the mercies of the lord from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will sing of the mercies of the lord tonight we are going to be exploring the wonders of consistent prayer. I want to show you something very powerful in the spirit. When we pray, when we pray, we're considering a topic, when we pray, and I'll be showing you the wonders of consistent prayer. What happens within a believer when you submit yourself consistently to strategic prayer as one of the tools that makes one of the tools that builds the believer. Luke chapter 18, please. We'll read from verse 1. We'll end at 7 where our text is. And then a few preambles and we go straight to the word. I hope that we'll have the time to pray whilst I teach because God placed it as a strong burden in my heart. And I'm praying that someone will find this key tonight and it will turn you into a sign and a wonder. And he spake a parable to them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. We're reading to verse 7. Our text for tonight is found in verse 7. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Verse 3. It says, and there was a widow in that city. This widow came unto him, the judge now, and said, avenge me my adversary verse 4 and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though i fear not god nor regard man yet because this widow troubled me i will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me verse 6 and the lord said hear what the unjust judge saith." read verse 7 let's read together are you ready Verse 7, 1, 2, go. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? One more time. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Amen and amen. One more scripture. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12. Let's read together. One to go. 
then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. May that be your experience in Jesus' name. Now, let me start by saying every encounter in Koinonia is a training. A training for you to become a person of grace, a person of understanding, a person of stature, and a person of power. Please pay attention now that every service, it doesn't matter in what form or in what fashion it comes, provided it is a koinonia service, I want you to see it as an opportunity for training. The kind of training that makes you a believer with grace, a believer with understanding, a man or a woman of stature, and a man or a woman of power. Hallelujah. I have read out for you a list of the kind of believer you are becoming as you submit yourself to the teachings week in, week out. Your becoming is not random. It's important that you continually burn within your mind and your spirit the kind of believer you are becoming. Are we together now? Every cook or every chef, whilst they are mixing all the ingredients, both simple and complicated, they know that they are mixing it towards a common goal. They have an end. Are we together? Yes, this is very important. I wrote something down here as an introduction and I want you to listen. Knowing God's desire and ordination for your life is like receiving an admission letter. Just listen before you write. Knowing God's desire and his ordination for your life is like receiving an admission letter into a high institution of learning. It merely tells you what you can become but an admission letter does not make you become. Are we together? If you receive an admission letter to study in a medical college or a law college, it is barely an invitation. It's giving you legitimate access to submit yourself to the processes that make you that lawyer in experience, that doctor in experience. Are we together? As profitable as holding an admission letter is, you cannot be called a doctor just because you have an admission letter. You cannot be called a lawyer. Nobody is ever called a lawyer because you have an admission letter into a law school or a doctor because you have an admission letter. So knowing God's desire for you, understanding, knowing his ordination for your life does not automatically mean you will become that which he preordained for you. It's like holding an admission letter. You have to submit yourself to the various practices, the various disciplines, the transformative processes that make you become inexperienced as per the field you were admitted in. Are we together? Now, generally speaking, I, I just decided to start with a checklist tonight. Most believers do not know that your becoming mighty in the spirit is predicated upon an exact body of spiritual knowledge. It is not every spiritual information that is necessary for your making, for your growth, for your becoming. But the bodies of truth required, if not found and if not understood and engaged, you will remain weak, you will remain stunted, your Christian experience will be, I mean, a continual expression of frustration. There are a number of things every believer must know. I wrote down a few things here and I want you to listen as you write, but use it as a checklist and find out which of these truths you do not know before we get into the teaching of the word proper tonight. Are we together now? My intent is to see by God's grace that you are thoroughly furnished. In fact, the Bible says it beautifully. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Paul was communicating his frustration to the church in Corinth. Give it to us, media, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. And I, brethren, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, he said, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2. He says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Isn't it amazing that Paul said, when I came to you, I came like a chef carrying both milk and meat. But when I discerned your state, it was a waste to feed you with meat. I had to make do with milk. 
it says because you are not able to bear it then neither are you able to bear it now so time does not necessarily determine growth he came one time and found out by assessing them spiritually that they were still babes and he said no i have to make do with milk that means every man of god has milk to feed and meat to feed and you see um, this is not a pastor's conference but let me just use this to charge everyone in righteousness you're a man of god here let me tell you the truth how you get milk is different from how you get meat are we together now every mother here knows that it is very easy in most cases to get milk you just need to express it is within you even if it's from a cow or a human being and you don't have to die to get milk but every time you see meat something died did you hear what i said a woman can be gisting while expressing milk laughing and all of that but every time you see anyone holding meat it is a testament that death has happened so when you desire to serve God's people milk and meat for milk all you need to do is to find the source it's a gift from God just the responsibility of expressing it and that's it but for meat every time you see meat whether on your plate or on your fridge it is a testament that something died it says in the year that King Uzziah died I Isaiah saw the Lord there is a relationship between death and sight death and revelation are we together now anyway so back to our discussion Paul was saying when I came to you I wanted to serve you with milk or with meat and I found out you were still infants and I had to make do with milk that means every man of God comes with milk and meat and the transition is dependent on one your level of receptivity but number two how much you engage the milk when they see the level and the extent of of development they are motivated to now transit you into meat and then even among meat there are all kinds of meat are we together now yeah there's what the Bible calls strong meat strong meat strong meat hallelujah there are a few things every believer must know number one every believer must understand the art of prayer you have to be trained to understand the art of prayer we'll speak a bit about that tonight number two every believer needs to understand how to access light from scripture if you do not know and you do not submit to training to know how to access light from scripture how to access light from scripture is different from reading the bible you can read the bible you can even study the bible and not know how to derive profit from scripture are we together now it's the same thing like having coconut and knowing how to mine the oil out of the coconut someone can have a lot of coconut at the back of your house and never be able to produce coconut oil or groundnut groundnut oil or olive oil any kind of thing there is a technology just because you have the raw material there does not mean you have the intelligence are we learning now many people have scripture but they do not know how to draw forth the riches the profit from the word and this happens through training are we learning now number three every believer must be trained on how to tame the flesh every believer you must be trained on how to tame the flesh you must be taught the dynamics of living above the flesh as a way of thinking as a way of living as a way of acting your Christian experience will be stunted in, in many, many, many dimensions if you do not know how to tame the flesh. Number four, every believer must understand the structure of God's kingdom, the way God built his kingdom. I'm just doing a checklist for your spiritual growth. This is koinonia. The structure of the kingdom. How did God build the kingdom to function? It's important that you know this. 
the Bible talks about Christ being the chief cornerstone. Then it talks about the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Are we together? Then the Bible now calls every believer living stones. Living stones that make up that structure. So everyone is a part of that building, but there is, there is an architecture that you must understand. And if you violate that ordinance, you will pay for it. For instance, if you turn any apostle and any pro prophet into the cornerstone of your life, you have distorted the architecture. Are you seeing that now? No matter how great any man of God is, no matter how great any individual is, at the point where you turn a man of God to now become your chief cornerstone, it doesn't matter what kind of impact they've made in your life, you've distorted it. Number two, if you fail to regard the foundations that God has put, there are consequences also. You see how it is? Most believers do not understand the structure of the kingdom. What else do you need to learn? You must be trained as a believer to know how to access help. Help from the realm of the spirit and help within the world of men. If you don't know how to access help, you will suffer. Your life will be mara. It will be like bitter waters. Many believers do not know how to access help. There is a way people access help. And there is a way, there is an approach to life that if and when you follow, help will be far from you. Are we together? What else do you need to learn as a believer? All believers need to be trained in the art of warfare spiritual warfare war betides the believer whether by deception or sincere ignorance who does not understand the dynamics of spiritual warfare you may not live to survive and walk in victory especially within this end time warfare every believer needs to understand kingdom service every believer needs to understand kingdom service the Bible says we have been bought with a price. It says, therefore glorify the Lord God with your body, which is the Lord's. Kingdom service. Every believer needs to learn the principles that make you relevant in today's world. The principles that make you relevant in today's world. Not only to God, but to men. There are many believers who have not been so trained, unfortunately, they have not learned the principles that make them spiritual and yet relevant within the context of their world without compromise. Jesus said, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. When it has to do with your origin, you are alienated from this system. But in terms of your impact, you are in the world. In other words, you cannot ignore the happenings that are around your world. Are we together? Every believer must be taught wholesome spirituality. Wholesome spirituality. Wholesome spirituality. This captures a general knowledge of the Bible. Wholesome spirituality. A general knowledge of the Bible. While you may not know everything about the Bible, it is a shame and I tell you it, it is... It is quite honestly embarrassing for any believer who has attended church consistently for one year, two years, three years under structured mentorship to not be able to intelligently articulate the Bible, even if it's in summary. Are we together? You must have a general fair enough knowledge of the Bible. For instance, the subdivisions of the Bible, it is, it is not... It is not anything burdensome for an average believer to be enlightened enough to know that the Bible is fragmented into various dimensions. There is the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch. Are we together now? Yes, Genesis down to Deuteronomy. There are the poetic books. There are the prophetic books. Are we together now? Yes. And then we have the Gospels. We have the book of Acts. We have the epistles. We have revelations. At least... To have that fair enough knowledge there are major stories in the bible anyone who has been reading his bible and loved jesus at least you should be accustomed to you can imagine we're talking about say um 
the parable of the ten virgins and someone who has been in church for at least three to five years is wondering you mean there's such a thing in the bible it means that person you may not be demonized but you are lazy lazy you should have found it somewhere are we together there are certain scriptures that your spirit you cannot say i forgot no are we together now it's like a doctor who has never heard of a syringe a doctor who looks at a stethoscope and says what is this I understand there may be certain machines you've not seen, at least the ones that were invented recently. But you cannot say the tools. How were you trained then? Are we together now? Wholesome spirituality. You must have a general appreciation of Bible knowledge. Number two, I'm still explaining wholesome spirituality. I just felt like dwelling a bit there. The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. Make reference to my teaching, knowing God accurately knowing god accurately you may want to listen to it to help this dimension of knowledge you want to be wholesome spiritually you must press to know god i teach there that the knowledge of god is three-dimensional the knowledge of his character the knowledge of his ways the knowledge of his power hallelujah then you must understand the plan of salvation you are not spiritual I don't care what you know. If you do not understand the plan of salvation, if you cannot intelligently articulate the plan of salvation, one, you are not matured. Number two, your spiritual knowledge is standing on shaky ground because it is the entire scope of the plan of salvation that culminates to the person Jesus who is the epicenter of the believer's work. Most Christians can tell you all kinds of things. They attempt to chew um, strong meat and you check they don't have teeth strong meat is for those who have teeth well developed not milk teeth there's what we call milk teeth am i right on that milk teeth milk teeth is not for you know strong meat the plan of salvation the average believer who is a church goer cannot explain to you the entire plan of salvation in the most simple way not 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 any elaborate theological explanation but very in a very basic way because they have not read it and unfortunately for many they have not found themselves in christian circles where that subject has even been discussed most believers can sadly talk about breakthrough they can talk about lifting they can talk about giving payment of vows and these things are not wrong but ask the average believer to give you intelligently a discourse on the plan of salvation you'll be very disappointed and that even includes all spiritual leaders hallelujah wholesome spirituality demands that you know who the believer in christ is that is the next aspect of wholesome spirituality i hope i've not lost you i'm just giving a very a very necessary preamble the believer in christ who is he who is she when you say someone has now become a believer in christ what is the implication of that statement in the days of men like papa hagin it was a shame it was almost embarrassing it was it was like a taboo for you to be around the word of faith circle and you could not describe articulately you didn't have to be a pastor there are things you see when you are in certain spiritual circles you may not know everything but there are things that are most surely believed luke chapter 1 verse 1 the things that are most surely believed among the brethren there are certain bodies of knowledge that those who are genuinely connected to that spiritual stream you cannot be ignorant of no it's like being for instance a member of say living faith and you have been there for 10 years and they ask you what is faith he said me too look let me tell you i'm really just a not shower as you see me like this i don't like trouble <laughs> what have you been learning are we together or with all due respect to a member of mountain of fire and they ask you tell us something about prayer he said my brother i just pray that's it i just pray that's all i know no you must stand in defense the things that are most surely believed among us who is learning very important you must learn about the holy spirit 
Nobody becomes spiritual truly if you have not been elaborately and extensively taught about the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the principal sponsor of true spirituality. And so if you don't know the Holy Spirit, we have a right to doubt how you became spiritual. Are we together now? And if the Holy Spirit is not there to journey with you, your, your appetite to becoming spiritual is at risk because you are going to encounter familiar spirits. There are other testy spirits that are, that they are determined to be tour guides for you. And my goodness, they will take you to chambers in the spirit and mislead you indefinitely. And you see, the thing about conviction is that even if you are wrong, you will die believing you are wrong because it was an experience you saw. You went there. You went out of your body. Nobody can say you didn't go there. It is only when we examine what you saw from the lens of scripture that we now see that truly you traveled, but where you went to is where you shouldn't have gone to. Are we together? If I come out of my body now and I have some kind of spiritual experience, uh, you can't say it was not real. I was there. I saw it. I saw this and saw that. It is only when we compare your encounters with the authority of scripture. That's when you say, ah, truly I went to, but I'm supposed to pray that I never go there again because the things that I saw, the things that I submitted my thing, myself to and the result that followed my life after I came back. Everything that comes from God has life. One of the ways you test everything spiritual is its ability to give life. Revelation, its ability to give life. Anointing, its ability to give life. One of the ways you test corruption in the spirit is the presence of death. Not the authenticity, not the eloquence, not the intelligence. Are we together now? So if you draw power from Satan, even if what you are teaching is true, people will be dying as they are listening to it. Strangely, they will listen to what should give life. But because the, the Holy Spirit is not the one behind it, what they are hearing is not a lie, but they will still die. One of the ways you test spiritual things is by the life giving dimension in it. I am come that ye may have life. If a word comes from God, what does it give? If the anointing comes from God, what does it give? If prosperity comes from God, what does it give? You see that now? So you test your experiences by the richness of the life of God that is derived out of it. All the dreams you've been having, show me the life. How did it make you become like Christ? How did it make you conform to the image of Christ? Are we together? I kept receiving impartation every time. With all due respect, impartation doesn't matter from who. If that impartation is turning you to something else and you cannot find life, even if the person doing the impartation is innocent, we must trace where the oil is coming from. By oil, I don't mean olive oil. I mean... Are we together? Most believers, because they have not been trained, they do not know how to test what they are receiving. They do not know how to test experiences. Every time angels appeared before men, the first thing they said was, fear not. That means the angelic should not leave you in fear and confusion. Gabriel said, I am come to give you understanding. So if you tell me you have been encountering angels and I see your life full of all kinds of confusion in every area, then I know that this angel you have been meeting is misleading you. Because when Zechariah doubted Gabriel, he felt insulted. He said, I am Gabriel that comes, that stands in the presence of the Lord. Are we learning now? I'm just doing this, 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 this checklist to be able to help you. Because many believers, unfortunately, many believers, they want to be mighty in the spirit but they have not attained onto that state of maturity. And the desire to be mature does not produce maturity. The desire to be mature pushes you closer to the corridors of wisdom. Proverbs 18 and verse 1, True desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. So desire takes you to the realm of wisdom. And when you encounter wisdom, then with wisdom comes growth. Because it is true wisdom, a house, a life, a destiny is built. Are we learning now? 
very very important wholesome spirituality you must know how to engage all of this i'm saying this so that you can check yourself beloved people look at me refuse to be stunted refuse to be a believer that does not bring justification to the spiritual investments that god is making on you if you've been in koinonia for one year two years or perhaps you have followed sequentially all the teachings that have come i expect that you should have attained onto a state you should be able to at least define a few things one of which i'm going to be teaching on again are we together now your value for the word your passion for spiritual things i should see certain evidences in your life that justify your time now most believers use inaccurate parameters to measure growth usually in our world and especially is because it is the most charismatic we want to use evidences of prosperity and miracles those are usually the two evidences we use and we peg them as the pillars of spirituality unfortunately it's not so there is a place for prosperity so if i came for koinonia poor dejected and in one year suddenly i became a multi-millionaire great house great car that is wonderful but chances are excellent if you compare my before and now or the latter part of me you can conclude that this man has really become spiritual it's not necessarily so the dynamics of spirituality is not like that even though spirituality has streams and one of the expressions is a prosperous life are we together yes spirituality has streams prosperity is not spirituality but spirituality can have an expression that causes you to prosper the miraculous itself is not spirituality are we together now the fish that brought coin was not necessarily spiritual it just obeyed an instruction and brought coins so there are many believers for instance who have not made up their minds to be spiritual and we pursue either the miraculous for those who are interested in ministry and then for those who want you know money and a good life and nothing is wrong with that necessarily but we pursue those things and we conclude that provided i have money and provided promotion has come and is coming i must be spiritual i'm telling you that it may not be accurate there are some of the most prosperous people around who are not spiritual at all when you weigh them in the spirit they are as light as a feather even though they have money so when we talk about weight in the spirit we have to use superior parameters this is life eternal john 17 3 that they may know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent are we together when the bible talks of bearing fruit he's not just talking of results alone there are fruits unto righteousness a transformed life intimacy with god are we together before other parameters it's important that we learn this now i did this checklist for you so that you will look carefully what aspect of my life have i ignored for some of you you have learned nothing about prayer perhaps some of you are just coming you are just getting connected to this vision you're most welcome but it's important for you to listen and learn some of you do not know how to derive profit from scripture you've not learned that you were not mentored to understand that some of you do not know anything about the holy spirit aside from the fact that you think he's a ghost there's a lot more to learn huh. are we together so let's deal with our subject for tonight i'm praying for you that every area of deficiency in your life may the holy ghost lead you to a system that covers up everything in the name of jesus christ that within the shortest time possible these areas of gaps in the spirit that can affect you in ministry that can affect you in business may the spirit of grace come through for you that you will be so enlightened in the name of jesus christ see the business of scripture when we seek to study scripture what we seek is understanding what we seek in is understanding what we seek is understanding because we rise upon the strength of the truths not just that you know that you understand and i'm praying tonight may the lord quicken us in jesus name we pray
Say amen. amen. When we pray, there is power in prayer. Prayer is one of the apostolic models that were left with the church. In Acts chapter 2 from verse 42, the Bible tells us the major spiritual activities that happened within the early church, Acts 2.42. It says they continued steadfastly. Take note of these two words, continued and steadfastly. The word steadfastly means diligently, favorable or otherwise. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. So prayer was a major part of the activities that turned ordinary believers to apostles. Right from Genesis to Revelation, we see accounts of saints praying, patriarchs praying, unbelievers praying. Are we together? The Bible is full of prayer. Prayer in its various ramifications, in various dimensions. The prophets of Baal, they prayed to Baal, asking him for help. Elijah prayed. Abraham prayed. Moses prayed. When Jesus walked upon the earth, Jesus prayed. The Bible would tell us every once and again that he departed in Mark chapter 1 from verse 36, 37, 38. That he departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. Verse, that should be um, verse 34, 35. Go back, 34 from 34 down. The Bible says, and in the morning rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Not that he slept. He prayed. Are we together? He taught the disciples to pray because they themselves requested that he should teach them to pray. They came to him according to Luke's synoptic account. They said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus began to teach them on prayer. It was Jesus himself who said a lot of things about prayer. So he spoke about prayer. It was a major training model as he was building the disciples to become apostles. He asked them to tarry with him when he went to Gethsemane. That they tarried with him for just an hour. They didn't even have the capacity to pray. The Bible tells us Jesus prayed repeating the same words three times. And sweat came like drops of blood. He prayed. He prayed for people while he prayed for himself. Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. He says, but I have prayed for you. It was Jesus that gave several stories and several parables relating to prayer. One is in Luke 18 where we read earlier on. And Jesus spoke about two men who went to pray. One who went arrogantly talking about his givings and the works of the flesh. And the other one went, he bowed himself and he was crying for mercy. Are we together now? So prayer is a subject that every religion, in fact, to be quite honest, I do not know any religion, any practice whatsoever. Provided there is spirituality connected to that religious practice, there is some form of prayer, some form of activity that seeks to connect men to the divine, whether demonically or, you know, our connection with Jesus Christ as we know. So prayer is an essential part of every believer's life. I want to listen very carefully. Jesus took time to pray. We see that Jesus won not just because he was the son of God. He won not just because of the presence of the Holy Ghost. He won not just because he had the word. But the Bible is very clear as to the fact that prayer played a vital role in his victory. A vital role in his victory. When the disciples came, in fact, it was at the place of prayer that the Holy Ghost came upon them. Are we together? He says to tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. The Bible says they gathered together in one accord, Acts chapter 2. And then the Holy Ghost came and began his dispensation through the saints. Prayer was an essential part of the early church. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. When they beckoned on the apostles to come and deal with the matters of welfare. They said, set among yourself people full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom that we will serve to attend over this business. And he says, as for us, verse 4, we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Continually to prayer. Continually to prayer. They didn't say we'll give ourselves to prayer. 
the key is continually the consistency to prayer all through scripture we are admonished to pray mark eleven twenty four. verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray it is in the place of prayer that you can believe that you receive and then you eventually have it are we together first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible speaking through the apostle to the church in thessalonica he says to pray without season say that after me pray without season one more time pray without season are we together yes he says for i know that this shall turn to my salvation or for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of christ jesus Apostle James further encouraged us to pray. James chapter 5 and verse 13. He says, is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. Let that man who is afflicted pray. Let that man who is afflicted pray. Let him not just think. Let him not just assume. Let him pray. It means that prayer is a vital component. Please listen very carefully. You have to listen to this to understand what I'm teaching you tonight. Prayer is not an option for believers. It is poor mentorship that has made prayer look like an elective course, if I would use that expression for believers, where you have to choose. So you hear people say things like, I'm not really the prayer type, but I go to church. But the prayer is, is not really, we, we are not really the prayer type. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. Prayerlessness has been responsible for the bankruptcy of efficiency in the life of many believers. Prayerlessness has taunted many moves of God, personally and territorially. There are many things that God desired. Those, 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 those desires of God were even captured by the prophetic, but they never happened because prayer was the missing ingredient between prophecy and its manifestation, whether for your life, your family, your city, territories, Many, many things God said have refused to come to pass because people have not learned the role of prayer in birthing the program of God, in birthing the purposes of God, and in evolving until they become powerful people. There are many ways to detect prayerlessness. One of it is to look for where powerlessness is. You see that now. When you find powerlessness, there usually is the diagnosis of prayerlessness or inconsistent prayer. There are wonders that are embedded in this mystery that Jesus left with the church, the mystery of prayer. A few people have left it to men of God the apostolic and prophetic and intercessory community. So we have those who have prayer groups, prayer houses, prayer ministries, and usually we fold our hands and wish them well. And every time we are plagued with trouble, the next thing we scan through our phones, who really prays? And you say, ah, there's this brother. That man, he can pray. And you say, please, sir, I'm in trouble. Send. And then sometimes we add a small seed to it. And then we expect that everything will be done. And it is unfortunate how many of us have not tapped into the riches. There are men of God today who may never be able to birth God's prophetic program for their lives. Not because God has not desired so, but they have not understood the role that prayer has to play in destiny actualization. Who is learning tonight? For some of you, you came to church to be taught that the real reason why your situation has not changed is because you have not prayed you have always desired to pray you have hoped that you have that you will pray occasionally when the situation pinches you you just take one day of fire brigade emergency approach but you have not given your destiny consistent prayer are we together now a woman can be pregnant with all due respect two months pregnancy is not the same as an assurance of having a baby are we together now? You heard what our dear sister, you know, the sad testimony, but we thank God for the end of it. Consistency. If a woman carries a baby for three months and she says, I'm really tired, 
unfortunately she's going to lose that baby she was pregnant there was a real baby there but she could not stay through there i sense in my heart that there are many of you god is telling you that if you remain the way you are and you remain prayerless you will literally one day watch your bishopric being given to another because God is a patient God, but he cannot allow the destiny of another person to be punished because of your refusal to become. There is a time allotted for your destiny to happen so that it profits God's program. Did you hear what I said? There is a time allotted for your destiny to happen so that it profits God's program. And once you are out of that calendar, God loves you, but he cannot wait indefinitely again because your refusing to emerge will now begin to cause pain and setback for another person's destiny. God is going to have to trust someone who has the diligence, the zeal, and is willing to pay the price in righteousness to become. I have taught you here that there are many people today carrying their own assignments and other prophetic assignments that was not part of their initial script because God found them so faithful they had enlarged their capacity he felt safe to add certain mandates to them so it is possible a man can start with God and that what that man is currently doing was never part of the original script but those that were supposed to execute that part of the assignment as an act of their will they did not engage in the many spiritual activities that produce power stature wisdom and grace and they continue to delay God's program and you will have to make do with an alternative I'm praying for you may God never raise an alternative because of your prayerlessness may God never have to give someone else your assignment because you have indefinitely delayed his program May God not have to raise help for your family from outside because all those who had the mandate to clear the powers of darkness and bring liberty to the family, they, they, they are at a loss as to what their prophetic role is. You will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Behind every man of stature in the spirit you see in the body of Christ, and this is not just limited to preachers, even though mostly preachers, behind every man and every woman of God, genuinely anointed, genuinely graced, that you see God trusting them today with mandates over nations and territories, is a rich and healthy, consistent, many years old prayer life. Did you hear what I said? Many years old prayer life. I submit to you and biology teaches us a 10 year old child and a 2 year old child are all alive they are all children but they are not the same a 13 year old child is called a teenager a 1 year old child is called a baby there is a difference the difference is in capacity when that 13 year old child becomes 18 years consistently growing you have an 18 year old child you have a 13 year old child you have a one year old child they are all children in some way but you see the difference is that one can be trusted with greater responsibilities one will have to be carried indefinitely one is still forming their beliefs and their understanding one is assumed now to be an adult how about a 50 year old man how about an 80 year old man who has lived effectively when consistency is in place time becomes an advantage the value of time is that it can help to sponsor consistency if you tell me you have been saved for 10 years ah uh, 10 years does not make any meaning to me until i see the investment you made in that time if you tell me you have been praying consistently genuinely for 10 years then I step up my bar of expectation. If it is genuine prayer, I should see what it has produced in your life. You cannot tell me you have been praying for 10 years consistently. Either there is something wrong with the way you pray, how you were taught to pray. If you have prayed for that long and I cannot see the power component, the wisdom component, the fellowship component, the results that follow that life, I will have to teach you how to pray in a way that works. Are we together now? 
Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. I don't know any ministry, any mighty ministry that did not start as a prayer ministry. Every ministry, it doesn't matter what you will later become, it starts as a prayer ministry. It doesn't matter what God is going to use you to do in the future. Are we together? The starting point, if you really want to do business with God, is prayer. In fact, it is better to be poor in Bible study and to be rich in prayer. There is something the Holy Ghost will do in you that will return you back to the place of the world. You can sit and open scripture in an empty way and not learn anything. But show me a people that can pray sincerely the Holy Spirit being in their midst. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Follow the spiritual history of many powerful believers in the kingdom. You will find a storyline like this. One day, a burden was put upon my spirit. The hand of God came upon me and by myself, I felt to separate myself somewhere and to start praying every day. If you don't hear that storyline, something is wrong. There must be, it doesn't matter how the story started, there must be a point where the Holy Spirit will place something on you. It's literally as if he hijacks you and takes you somewhere and you begin to become a slave to spiritual things not a slave in a negative way you have submitted yourself to it so every night two hours under one tree now you don't know what is happening to you tomorrow you go there again next week you go there again i'll be teaching you what happens to your spirit man when you start let me tell you the truth a day will come you will go as usual and something will come upon your life you will never recover from again it's true the church has not understood prayer properly now there are people who pray but what corrupts the potency of their prayer is their motif and their understanding so in as much as they engage in spiritual activities the profit point the, by their ignorance they have downplayed what prayer should deliver but when prayer is done well, when prayer is done properly, hallelujah. Listen, the way believers grow is very defined. You are not given liberty to choose how you grow. The parameters for the believer's growth is defined and the tools that make for that wholesome growth are also defined. Are we together? When you tell me I want to grow spiritually, you won't say, well, I think I should choose what to do. No, there is what to do already. There are not many. What you need is not just to know them, but to engage them consistently. And one of it, ladies and gentlemen, is to explore the wonders of consistent prayer. Let me tell you something I have learned about prayer. The first assignment of prayer is not to deliver results. You will be disappointed many times if what leads you to consistent prayer is a problem you want to solve. <clears throat> God can answer a prayer request somewhere in church, but when you submit yourself to prayer, the first thing that happens is not results. The first thing that happens is death. Are we together now? That prayer begins to do something within you and God found something in men that he uses the moment God sees that the delay in answer is keeping you prayerful, he will prolong it intentionally. That is the only way he can trap you. I know you won't believe what I'm saying, but it is true. Listen, look at me, look at me. Let me teach you this. <laughs> Let me teach you something about God. You see, Ba, God does not reason like men. Are we together now? Everything in the economy of God is with respect to his will and his program. And if God sees that there is a situation in your life, he's not hurting you. Anything 
that can help you become is a tool he can use. So there are many of you here, your convenience led to your prayerlessness. And when God found you in a situation that trapped you, that trap was producing hunger, that there was nothing else that could come, the lack of the rent, the lack of the situation, you never would have woken up to pray by yourself. You never would have been able to fast by yourself. But when you had one medical report that was not exactly the best, now it's not God that is causing that. And if it is God at the end of it is glory, but there are times that God prolongs a little because he has found profit. That's what it means to call light out of darkness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you know how God lures men in the kingdom? He gives you a taste of what can become your reality. Then he hides it back. If you don't know this about God, you have a very long journey to go. Listen to me. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. Are we together now? Yeah. As a man of God, one day you will go for a meeting, you know, that you just went there sincerely hoping and God will do mighty things in that meeting and you will go back and you honestly cannot tell what law you engaged to have seen that kind of power. God withdraws it. He walked it through your hands and he withdrew it so that your hunger will drive you back to the secret to say, Lord, I have tasted of this. Don't deprive me of this joy again. And it will, it will cause you to stay until it becomes your experience. Are we together? So there are many times it looks like God is not interested in answering prayers. No, he has found something within that condition that profits his program in your life. Are we together now? Yeah. It's true. This is what it means for death to walk in a man. When you submit yourself to prayer, if God cannot draw you to the place of prayer willingly, and because of the kind of destiny you have, if he discerns the sincerity in your heart that is not rebellion, listen, once it is not rebellion stopping you, God himself will use any opportunity available to draw you to the place of prayer. Where God will leave you in peace is when he's aware that yours is not laziness, it's not weakness. It's an act of your will. You have chosen to reject efficiency. He will respect you. But once he finds hunger there, are we together now? So the day you hear that you've lost your job and you have five children to feed and there is absolutely nothing. God did not cause the loss of the job. But when you come to him and say, Lord, I will not leave you till you tell me where I'll feed my children. He says, finally, there is, an, there is a burning bush. Something has drawn you there. If it is the God of the Bible, I assure you, it's not the next day of that prayer you will get the answer. You will stay there. There is an advantage he has found. There is something you never would have had him say. You will not even believe it. There is a level of pride. There is a level of arrogance he needed to deal with. So many of the things that you think are evil are working good in you because they drew you to the place of prayer and God will not be in a hurry to answer them until the spirit of prayer and supplication rests upon you. He now knows that even if he's answered, you can't stop praying again. Then he can bring the answer. Who is learning tonight? You think you will go to pray for a three days fast all to get power that runs the remaining part of your life. God is not that stupid. Let me tell you the truth. Three days prayer and fasting cannot kill flesh and lust. You are joking. It will take many years of slow dealings by the spirit. Are we together now? God knows you are a politician until you repent. So when you get there, Father, I love you. You see all these souls you have given me. God says, they are my souls. So stay. Lord, I'm fasting because of this conference. The next level of my ministry depends on it. And God will keep quiet like he's not hearing you. 
while you pray and pray. The truth is that you were fasting that three days fasting because you have seen that destiny helpers will be gathered there. And he will see the sincerity of your heart. But God is looking beyond that program. He wants to make a sign and a wonder. He may honor you for that program, but he will lead you. He will still leave that hunger in you until you get to a point where it's no longer about you, no longer about a program, no longer about an anointing. You give yourself continually. A level of death begins to walk there. Ladies and gentlemen, I will run with you through a list that I prepared tonight. What happens when men begin to give themselves consistently? If you are not consistent in prayer, you will not see any of these things I'm mentioning, even though you are praying. There are people who have been praying, but they will not find anything among this list that I'm about to mention because there's no consistency. Africa prays so many believers pray but we have not derived the profit and the power that comes from prayer because we have not been consistent i'm praying for you that the spirit of prayer and supplication tonight honestly will mantle someone that the grace to pray and stay till it works wonders in your life may it rest upon you in jesus name when we pray there are six things that happen when we pray consistently consistently number one the first thing that happens to a believer when you submit yourself to consistent prayer is that our spirits are quickened to discern our spirits are quickened to discern the quickening of the spirit that leads to discernment is the first gift you receive when you are consistent. The quickening of the spirit that causes you to discern. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Let's hurry up. The Bible says be careful. The word careful there is talking about anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. Listen. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god what happens next verse 7 it says and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding are you seeing that something has happened to you beyond the realm of understanding that peace will guard your heart and your minds do you know what it means it is, a, it is a dimension of discernment where the peace of god guards both your heart and your mind is like a system of regulation it tells you something it's a language in the spirit when the peace of God can guard your heart and guard your mind most people do not even know what this is about because they have not submitted themselves to prayer consistent prayer listen to me everyone listen to me you don't have to be an intercessor you just need to be a serious person with god and your destiny at the point you make up your mind in righteousness that i will submit myself to consistent prayer consistent prayer consistent prayer praying in the spirit praying in tongues consistently you access the quickening of the spirit. What does that mean? I have taught you many times in this house that the, the way we have senses, Papa Hagen would teach it so beautifully, that you have your sense of smell, your sense of sight, your hearing, your skin for touching and feeling. Are we together? Your tongue for tasting. We say there are five senses biologically, you know. In the realm of the spirit, there are more than five senses. Now, with all due respect, fathers like Papa Hagen would teach that there are also five senses in the realm of the spirit. I agree, but there are many other impulses, and I taught this many years ago, that there are many other impulses that a man has within his spirit that does not have physical definitions. Are we together now? There are various channels for perceiving things that do not have their physical parallels. You cannot give it language and yet you know that you have perceived things in the spirit are we learning now there is the hearing and hearing in the spirit too there is seeing 
and seeing in the spirit too. There is feeling and feeling in the spirit too. But there are other channels for perception that are not defined. Biology does not give us definition. But they are, it's, it's like your body is connected to a lot of other higher mechanisms for perception. Let me tell you, if you pray consistently, you will be able to discern immediately. And, and, and I'm not talking of flesh and biases. You can know when God is in a thing and you can know when God is not in a thing. Your spirit has been quickened. You can shake somebody and not know why you are feeling the way you are feeling. The person is not bad. There is nothing evil because the physical realm only tastes and feels things that are current. Your spirit man can perceive tomorrow today. So you can see someone who is very nice today, but your spirit man is fighting 2026. He's fighting trouble that is coming from that relationship today. You can't, there is, there is nothing exactly that should tell you why there is trouble. I mean, this business partner is a very nice person, but your spirit has already gone and it can perceive impulses beyond the current level. Let me tell you this. That is what it means for the peace of God to protect your heart and your mind. When you submit yourself to prayer and there is turbulence within your spirit, even when there is peace physically, keep praying. Keep praying. Are we together now? Spiritual realities are not like physical realities. And if you do not know how to discern, you will, there are people today with all due respect who have passed on, who should have no business dying. They did not train this faculty. Are we together? They entered a car, everything around them, the Holy Ghost was trying to use everything to tell them but they could not perceive nor did they have the spiritual intelligence to take authority over the situation the quickening of the spirit the quickening of the spirit you can see someone have you met someone before and you just connected as if you've known yourself for five years it's because your spirits were prepared already it is only physically you don't know yourself but in the realm of the spirit there is something about destiny and when you saw it deep called on to deep that's how destiny connections happen let me tell you the truth if you want to wait till you know people physically you are carnal you will pay the price there's a way you can see someone and know, I, I don't know what it is about this person one day after five years you will meet in France and say I saw you somewhere yes truly so you are the one who should help me Judas never said, Jesus, I will kill you one day. Jesus saw Judas. Can you imagine walking with someone every day knowing that this is the person who will kill me tomorrow? He said, that which you do, do quickly. And he went and did it quickly. You see how foolish he was? They've already told you, oh, that which you would do, do quickly. And the, the disciples thought that Jesus was talking about money issues. I cannot tell you how many people have been saved because their capacity to discern had been quickened. There are people who have missed out on the prophetic program of God. God was going left and they went right. And they stood there wondering, God, where are you? God says, I'm on the other side of your discernment. You need to pray in this end time. There is a way that seemed right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. The first thing that happens to you when you give yourself to prayer is you no more interpret life by what you hear, by what you see. Look up. Many people are defeated today because their principal channel for perceiving and interpreting life are their eyes, their ears, their brain. If my eye says it is good, my ear says it is good, I feel it is good, I will do it. That is a, that's a suicide mission. There are many good things that will land you in trouble. You need to develop other perceptions. Are we together? And it does not always have to be negative. Sometimes someone can come to your company and somebody will tell you, this guy is a thief. This guy is a nasty person. He's always causing trouble. But your spirit man receives him in a way you cannot explain. 
because your spirit has seen that there was a prophetic word mama gave on that boy and say even though you are stubborn because you helped me may God always use you that is the blessing God wants your company to receive so you can see the boy will come he's stubborn he's not listening but if you can discern and ask God why did you bring this child to this house as a house help one day God will tell you you see ba many things that God gives men does not come in packages that are beautiful it takes discernment are we together now yes it takes discernment somebody who may not necessarily be that loyal and faithful but one day the person will be a contributor to you at a point of desperation desperation I know people today who kept supposedly nobodies in their houses when they became sick when they became down do you know that some of those young ladies young guys were the people who stood with them if I made up their mind that even if madame would die even if Oga would die I would stand even when their own children ran away there was a little girl called the slave girl her mother gave her a name we don't know what her name is but she went to the house of Naaman you think that she went to that house on her own as part of the spoils of war no there was a relationship she had with the prophet and God kept her there because he saw the purity of Naaman's heart now it was up to Naaman to listen to the girl it takes discernment some of the answers to your prayer are in packages that you will never receive if you are working with your eyes you're working with your ears who is learning tonight you must trust God for grace to discern because for some of you the reason why you always fall easily is that enemies have found out that your weakness is laughter anybody that laughs with you even if it's a, a knife is on his forehead you say you are welcome to my house discernment mm. discernment not every kind of kiss is a sign of love huh there is a kiss that is a sign of love but there is a kiss that is a signal this is the person to die in this family this is a person to go down in this family I pray for you where you have entered trouble on your own because your spirit has not discerned from today may God sharpen your discernment may God sharpen your discernment hallelujah it was God's servant who said as they kept going from place to place looking for land for ministry they could not find anywhere but he got to a place and the holy ghost told him this is the place it was a forest same thing with rccg same thing with every there's nobody who went to their promised land and it looked like a promised land every promised land will look like a wilderness it is discernment that makes you to see the unseen are we together now for somebody, the job you are about to quit, God is saying stay there, not because of the salary. Stay there because God has orchestrated that by December, the helper, you see that now. You may have been treated bad in the place, but stay there. Now for many people we are controlled by salary. When the devil, I'm not saying it's wrong, and I'm not being, being uh, you know, uh, on... Uh, what's the word now I, I relate with the pain of people but I'm telling you why many b believers get into trouble is that they are governed by physical things when the devil wants to move you out of the place of destiny he flags more money for you and you can literally move 10 years backward because 100,000 was added to your life the first thing that happens when we pray is that we are quickened by the Holy Ghost in the place of prayer to discern number two very quickly I want you to listen to this one what happens when we pray we receive the prophetic blueprint for every season of our lives oh this is serious when we pray we receive in the place of prayer not the prophetic blueprint for our destiny the prophetic blueprint for every season of our lives god can show you your end 
and you may never get there because you do not know and you do not have the blueprint of seasons now let me tell you this what you call destiny is a summation of many seasons in your life and if you do not know how to receive the prophetic blueprint per season you will miss out on prophetic moments let's look at a few scriptures first corinthians chapter 2 please 9 and 10 very quickly first corinthians 2 9 and 10 but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man listen the things which god had talk to me koinonia god had prepared he's prepared them already there are things realms dimensions he's prepared for them that love him verse 10 the bible says but god has to reveal what he has prepared just because it is prepared does not mean it will manifest in your life it is prepared but hidden prepared but shrouded are we together prepared but closed and sealed it is in the the place of prayer that you afford the holy ghost the opportunity to reveal it unto you because it is only revealed by his spirit the spirit in the place of prayer begins to search all things even the deep things of god and those things the bible says have been ordained for our glory when we pray we receive the blueprint the prophetic blueprint for every season please look up you've heard my story i told you from the time god called me i already saw the vision of nations i already saw the visions of several people but how many of you know that i still would have failed in ministry even with that vision because when my time in zaria was over it was not part of the initial vision i saw where else i will go are you seeing it now you can have the big picture but every season demands you receiving a blueprint that guides you for that next level honestly when I knew I began to sense in my spirit by this impulse of discernment that in truth my season in Zaria had come to an end but now whether it was Abuja or it was Jaws or it was America or UK because all of these impulses had been registered in my spirit that koinonia would find expression in all these places but which is which that one i did not know if god leads you one of the way you will know he's leading you is he will never show you everything no it is page after page don't think he will give you the book and say go mm -mm. you will have to refer to him again i've exhausted page five and he says prepare for page six and you will have to submit yourself again some of you started well but you are about aborting the next season because you made a blind assumption that just because page one to five has been executed well it means that the remaining will work well i began to pray every day sincerely investing in the place of prayer lord for the sake of your name let me not miss out on the next level where do you want i'm telling you if i had my way i'm not sure it's abuja would come no are we together now lovely place i love the place but maybe i would have gone somewhere else but in the place of prayer and you would think because god was sending me remember what i told you i used to wonder why it takes god a while to answer and let me tell you if you're a person of faith you need to balance your understanding of faith with this thing i just taught you if not you'll be frustrated it is not every time god gives immediate answers and it does not stop him from being god there is profit in process and when god finds that in the life of a believer he will withhold answers intentionally to produce capacity and produce power i remember praying and weeks turned to months and i was praying and one day as always i was praying my usual prayer and a vision was opened before me and i didn't hear anything all i saw was the map of abuja and i knew that was it i remember rejoicing i said finally some of you would have said god so it's finally now why did you now waste my time when i'm already in the abuja always see what you have become before the answers came always see what you have become 
God is more interested in what you become than the answer you receive. Did you hear what I said? God is more interested in what you become than the answer. If God answered me after day one, maybe I would not have this kind of result to the glory of God. Do you know why? Because sometimes when answers come and your flesh is still alive, you will think it was a dexterity, your level of spirituality. There is a level of brokenness. There are times God does not answer till you make certain personal covenant resolutions with him. He will wait until the day you get angry and say, okay, God, I'm telling you, if you finally give me this money, I'm the one telling you as I obtain grace, then the answer comes. And so this is what you were waiting for. You would have told me, telling you will not make you do it. The human being, eh, aside from the dealings of God, is, all, is also a master of deception, even to yourself. Until God prunes you, he cannot trust the things you say because you've said many things that you did not live up to it. You ask him to kill you. He knew you were playing. You would have died a long time ago. You were so emotional, you wanted the result. Oh God, I'm telling you, just give me a job. God said, pray, please, pray. I've already seen your heart. I've seen your heart. Give me a job, even if it's there. And God said, no, I want to make you a multi-millionaire. But I have checked your family tree and I've seen the tendencies of pride and the tendencies of flesh. And because of the way enemies have insulted you, if I give you 10 million, 100 million in this state, you will first leave me and flog it on the face of those who did not. So let me kill that self. Yes, sir. Occasionally, you will shelve the prayer and try to act in the flesh then fail woefully and return back in repentance and say god i'm here he says i'm still waiting let's pray but if it is me that will prosper you something in you must die and by the time you get to a point where one day you will read a scripture and say god i don't care again whether i prosper or i don't prosper whatever happens i'm telling you that as for me and i will follow you for the rest of my life somebody suddenly calls you and says god spoke to me in january and you say in january and you are only obeying now my brother i suffered from january till october because of your disobedience as funny as what i'm saying is this is how it works <laughs> there is an invisible hand that has withheld many answers because the version of you now it will be a risk to your destiny for those answers to drop. Therefore, you pray to receive the blueprint. It was in the place of prayer God brought the vision of Sound of Revival. It was right now, I'm still praying and saying, Lord, how do you want it to be? Because I'm not going to assume that just because we did it the way we did it, uh -uh, we parted the Red Sea by the mercies of God. But how do you want it this time around? Do you want us to walk on water or do you want us to get a boat? If you stand before seven rivers, hear God for the seven rivers. It's the reason why the world struggles. They have one result today, they cannot produce another one tomorrow because of assumptions. Listen, your prophetic blueprint is sealed. It takes engaging in the place of prayer. And let me tell you this. Prayer reveals and prayer purifies what you saw. Prayer does not just reveal, but it purifies. There are many times you will see things, both the ones God showed you and the ones that came out of emotions. Are we together now? Getting up to execute what you saw will leave you in pain. Just because it came from the place of prayer does not mean it came from God. You have your will. You are still being transformed. Who is learning? There are many, many things that you would think is God that told you. Submit yourself to prayer and you will be shocked. You will have to tell God sorry because at the end of it, you will find out that all that confidence of saying it was God is not God. That's why you must be careful. In the kingdom, arrogance is dangerous. There are many statements that you make and say, I know what God told me. And then later God says, okay, come my son. Honestly, it's not me. Mm -mm. You were in pain. This seed that you raised you felt in your spirit it was me but it was a mix of pain and rent <laughs> i 
and other issues that led to that thing it was not me at all and then if you are broken you can say god i'm sorry i'm sorry or you can say god no i know i had you and he said me that I, this is god i'm telling you i'm not the one who spoke you are still saying i'm the one who spoke okay remain here and many people remain stunted there prayer does not just reveal the blueprint for your destiny it purifies it because while God is speaking it comes through the lens of your mentality the lens of your mind and many other information can be added that did not come from the throne it is prayer that purifies it eventually you will see that ah God said do two programs the vision came so powerfully flesh added five more programs and God says reduce it reduce it the remaining five is not me mm -mm, it's not me ah, god but based on what i'm seeing i'm already seeing myself mm -mm, it is not me and then eventually you will see his wisdom i hope you are learning tonight the blueprint only god knows how many things i've had to cancel in my jota that i would have been convinced that it was god when they came now i have grown it doesn't matter what i see or hear I write it and it becomes my place, my prayer point. I have to take it to the threshing floor. Are we together now? If God says, organize a program next week, I will write that vision. You ask the leaders. There are times you can see me come with a lot of energy and tell you, ah, guys, there's something good. And then you see me keep quiet. The leaders are already used to it. Once they see me keep quiet like that, they don't even bother saying, sad. You, you mentioned that we're going to Russia the other time. What happened? I'm not ashamed to cancel anything that I see that is not God. It's cheaper to say sorry than to be disgraced a thousand times in destiny because of pride. Are we together? See, when you walk like this, your activities will not be many, but your winning percentage will be so high. Almost everything you do produces extraordinary results extraordinary results there are people who will do 50 things before they win three they keep failing in everything then after 10 activities wasting money wasting time if you lead the people that way they will leave you alone because they've already mastered that something is wrong with your hearing let me tell you this if you wanted to be a leader that commands followership you are not god but you must learn how to hear god if you move people left and you say, sorry, I thought it was right. They now go right. They now go left. They will love you, but they stand back and say, please, let's leave this guy. So he goes right and left. He, he loves God, but it's clear that he doesn't know where he's going. And people turn and look for direction. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. I don't know what is next in the script of your destiny, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, my God will reveal it to you expressly. The next script of your life, let it be revealed for you. And hear me, where you have already assumed a blueprint that is not in your blueprint, whether it came by flesh, it came by emotions, I pray from my heart for you. May God give you the courage to cancel and shelve it now. Cancel and shelve it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are working with God, you must have the flexibility that when you realize that this is not God, I know somebody who made up his mind, he sent me a text one day, you know, just maybe three or four years ago, that God asked him, you know, to build a house for his family. And I may not know everything about God, but I know how God works. I said, this guy does not have the capacity to do that kind of thing. And I, I, I know how God works. I said, no, this is not. But the gentleman, you know, took a step of faith and went, did this, borrowed money, got into all kinds of trouble. After a long time, I didn't hear from him. He now reached me and said, I should pray for him. God has, you know, he doesn't understand this thing about God again. He's really frustrated. I said, my friend, it is not God. It is your confusion about him. And right now, you are bleeding. You are in trouble. They will soon jail you. The way out is to go to God and repent. Are we together? Repent and say, Lord, you've met me in the middle of the fire. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't leave me there. Don't leave me there. Some of you now, one of the, there is the gift of pain. But let me tell you this. Most people's pain is an indication that you are out of, of, you are out of the will of God. 
don't fight the pain use it as a check to go back and say God why is my life difficult why are simple things unusually hard for me it may not necessarily be demonic it may just be that the hardship is a testament that you are outside of the will of God again I pray for you the blueprint for the next level of your life may God release it upon you is someone learning tonight number three very quickly what happens when we pray when we pray we receive direction for the next level receiving a blueprint is not the same as receiving direction receiving a blueprint talks of the mandate for the next level but receiving direction for the next level Isaiah 30 21 Isaiah 30 21 and thine ears shall hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way listen your blueprint talks of the place but direction talks of the way to the place you can know the place but you may not know the way to the place i tell you this i have learned this as a leader and as a man of god that one of the major reasons for the delay of people is confusion over direction confusion over direction your life is as fast as your knowledge of the direction are we together some of you most of you drive here if i tell you go to shop right or any one of these places and buy me something if you know the direction you can almost time your arrival there that in five or ten minutes except for traffic i am there but if you do not have direction even though you know the place you can go round and round and round until you find yourself in another state and people ask you what are you doing here you say i started a simple journey to go to a shopping mall that was 10 minutes away and i began to go and go and go and go and lack of direction not lack of motion many of us the reason why we are stunted in life and in destiny is we have not had the voice saying this is the way walking in it if you're in business here listen to me by god's grace huh i have sufficient financial intelligence by the mercies of god but i will tell you this the biggest risk you can take in your life in this end time is to use common sense you will fail in a way that your life will become a memorial for many people common sense has destroyed people you need divine direction. The unbeliever who is doing business is not under attack because he's serving Satan. You who has vowed to God that you will not bribe, you will not kill, you will not be corrupt. You are the one whose testimony Satan is interested in. You need divine direction. Someone say divine direction. Never take a step until you get clarity of direction. Write that down. Never take a destiny step till you get clarity of direction. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Let's hurry up. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. I feel like starting ministry. <laughs> you see, Ba, this direction sometimes is not just limited in showing you where to go. This direction is also showing you how to escape trouble. When Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he said, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. You know what temptation is? Anything that can have a hold on you and trap you down, he says, there had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Listen, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to, but with that temptation, he will make a way to escape. A way to escape a way to escape that means when people put a snare for you to trap you down in life to trap you down in ministry if you know how to pray there is no snare of the fowler that shall ever lay sway on you i'm telling you if the devil puts a trap for you and you actually go in and enter there it's because you did not maximize the riches that come in prayer are we together let us set this trap so that when he comes he will fall into it 
in ministry, fall into it, in destiny, fall into it. And because you are directed by the Spirit, the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. In the office, they orchestrate something and leave it for you. Just when trouble is brewing, they've been praying so that they trap you and take you out of that place. Now plus discernment, plus your prophetic destiny and now you have direction, you will be surprised. Most of us lack direction and you must pray. Ladies and gentlemen, direction does not come after one day of prayer. You will need to pray until it comes. But when it comes, you will obtain grace to run. You will run like Elijah when you have direction. I'm praying for you. Every confusion in and around your life, in the name that is above all names, in this season, may my God grant you direction as you submit to pray. May my God grant you direction as you submit to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Direction for the next level. For everyone that seeketh, find it. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. 8 says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that seeketh, find it. Everyone that knocketh, it shall be opened. You must cry for direction. Lord, where do I go with my wife and my children now? I've lost a job. I have opportunities to go to Canada. I have opportunities to go to UK. I have opportunities to go to wherever it is. But Lord, it looks tempting, I confess. But I cry for grace. I cry for grace. Give me direction. Where am I going to now? What is the next level of my life? I, I sense in my heart, I, I, I was praying for the next level in ministry. And I saw Bielsa. It doesn't mean Bielsa is where you go to. It can mean that's where an attack is coming from. You have to pray. Don't assume. Direction. As for me, if God does not speak about the next level of koinonia, we stay here honorably. But when he speaks, there is no power in existence. No power in existence. I rather mark time with God and move straight from this level into another level of victory than to keep taking many leaps without God and life will have to force you to return back to your last place of obedience and start the journey again. Number four, what happens when we pray? Are you ready? When we pray, we contend against spiritual forces that fight the actualization of our destinies. When we pray, we contend against spiritual forces that fight the actualization of our destinies. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Please give it to us quickly. We wrestle. First three words. For we wrestle. First three words. For we wrestle. The idea there is not a physical fight. This is a spirit communication but that there is a contention. There are forces, demonic forces, determined to thwart prophecy, to thwart the purposes of God from finding expression in your life. I have taught you what governs Satan's attacking you is what God has said about your life. If God has not said anything about your life, I assure you Satan is not exactly interested in you. You can offer yourself to be attacked. He will tell you he's busy. What makes Satan interested in you is that he has seen the voice of God towards your direction. And he says, what has God said concerning Joshua Selman? What has God, why is the attention of God in this family? And out of the six people in this family, why is this lady and this guy? Let's go and find out what God is saying. Because Satan knows that God does not waste his time. And every time God speaks, his power, his grace, and his favor follows his word. So Satan looks for those who are carrying prophecy upon their lives. And they become his objects of attack per season. This answers the question, Apostle. How come this year has been full of attacks? Because of the word that came upon you. Now that you know, you don't just say attacks go away. You fight it. It's called the fight of faith. You fight it in the spirit. 
Many people do not know we have a fight of faith. My brother, hear me. Because God told you you will have a great ministry does not mean you will have a great ministry. Most people don't know how determined Satan is. You want to know how determined Satan is? Watch a life that does not pray and see how he does not stop till he wastes you. Satan does not spare. You will think after six years of oppressing you, he should pity you. The waste goes onward. That's why those who carry his spirit, for instance, terrorists, you see how they behave. You will think they should pity you because you are in pain. They don't mind wasting you. It's a reflection of their father, the devil. If you leave the devil and say, I'm sure he will only touch the family small. <laughs> no, he will only start small, but he will waste everything. As for me, oh, I've made up my mind that my environment will perpetually be under a spiritual military surveillance. I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. And in the name of Jesus, I will fight a good fight of faith honorably. I will not let Satan come near Koinonia. I will not let him come near you. I will not let him come near me. Where will he go? Ask him. He can go where else, but not me. Someone say, not me. He didn't hear you. Mm -mm, not me. In the name of Jesus. Not me means not anything connected to me. In the name of Jesus Christ. That you give birth to a healthy child. And after five years, your child starts misbehaving. And they tell you it looks like this child suddenly has developed a problem. That is the devil. You need to know how to engage in prayer. Most times we discuss problems and we don't pray. Mothers pray. There is a campaign against the children. You see, I've told you this. All our children from age 13 or 14, maybe fair enough, 15, down to zero. I tell you, there is a definite project from hell to waste that whole generation. And any family that you can be rich, if you don't pray, you will be surprised. And I'm not talking about the vices that have plagued our world now. And unfortunately, the institutions that have been set up by Satan to advance Babylon. Your child returns with something that stops you from sleeping. Asking you questions you cannot sleep as a parent. Learning all kinds of useless demonic things. The generation of our parents was a generation of loyalty. Even if they didn't believe you, they will respect you till you die. But this generation will ask questions. Why should I believe in Jesus? Give me at least three reasons. I was taught in a school you didn't go to. They used chalk and blackboard. We are using apps. Give me an intelligent reason. I will give you five while I should leave Jesus. Give me three while I should stay. This is the generation here today. We grew up in a generation of Cain and obedience. Cain and obedience. No questions. Sit here. Why? Mm -hmm. Don't ask questions. Your child will say, why? And you touch him, the government will help him and say, why? I'm telling you the truth. If we don't pray, we are going to lose a whole generation. Lose a whole generation. Every koinonia child here, I'm not talking of adult children, our children, in the name that is above all names, any attack that is on any family, if you're a mother here, lift your hands. So any attack, I pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, that attack returns back to hell. 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 Please be seated. Back to hell. Back to hell. Help them. The name of Jesus. By the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And if the devil has crept into any family planting attacks let me tell you this satan can attack in whatever way he can attack your health he can attack your finances he can attack a husband and a wife they've been living in peace just when prophecy is about to happen the man will have a dream and see his wife with a knife that is demonic manipulation and if it does not have spiritual intelligence sometimes unfortunately they now come to us men of god and we now say ah you've been staying with a witch and that becomes trouble in the family again i'm praying for you any family going through attack here if you're not going through an attack that's all right but if you are going through any your series of events around your life that you have not understanding the last one month the last two months 
I pray for you be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now strange occurrences in dreams strange occurrences it looks like there are all kinds of enmity from left right and center from the depth of my heart I pray for you may God show you a way of escape listen warfare is real did you hear what I said I ought to teach you the truth warfare is real Satan will attack anything that carries the grace of God including your destiny apostle but I'm doing well in business I just made one billion this month congratulations it's not only you that saw it hell saw it they saw the things you wrote I will give hundred million to God's work and Satan says not when I'm here let's crash this business let's do let's plant a thief or let's change someone who was once good and turn that person somewhere else Satan is that determined to destroy your destiny are we together now yes hmm. there are some of you God raised helpers I'm coming there we're about to pray some serious prayer this night make sure you open up your heart I tell you a woman once reached me true story and she was really angry at another woman angry and I told her calm down and she had a story that somebody who was going to help her that other woman they sat down doing women talk and they started saying all kinds of things against that one and that one was angry and said I did not know the woman I wanted to help is like this and just withdrew her help and support so when she later opened up and told the woman now who was in need why she didn't help her and traced it to that other one she was angry I usually don't have the time to respond to text message but sometimes when I look at certain things I know that you need to do some damage control else people will carry their mindset the woman was angry ah church people betray us I said mm -mm, that's not the issue I said madam you are a spiritual person I want you to look beyond this and to see that there is an attack ah this is for this I said no look beyond this if you are angry at your fellow man and fellow woman you have been cheated you are void of spiritual intelligence you need to see that there are invisible hands joining the heads of people whether it's the body of Christ or your family I want you to see Satan behind these things he uses men as puppets are we together now it is the reason why you must pray you must pray that God will take evil people out of your life you must pray that God will preserve your peace by your godly means you must pray now I'm sorry to say this but I remember there was a time I prayed for a lady medical practitioner and how did she contact HIV hospital um, you know using whatever it is and she did not even know a reaction happened after a few months and that was it and I said Lord I will pray for you with all my heart I went back and I was burdened I said this lady did not I mean you can imagine is it a crime now to be in a hospital and this has happened and you see the thing with society is that they don't even have time to hear the truth once people hear whatever everybody runs their mouths people there are people because of their pain they are itching to hear everything bad about your life it comforts them we're going to pray oh. not my destiny no, not my destiny not my destiny in the name of Jesus God has brought me thus far I will not go up and come down not my destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I will not go up and come down before I give you the remaining take a minute and I'd like you to aggressively open your mouth and pray I declare exemption is someone praying let it be from the depth of your heart exemption from witchcraft exemption from evil higher and higher not up and down glory to glory not glory and shame increase to increase not increase and lack fire to fire 
not on fire today and cold tomorrow. Outside, pray. Zaria, pray. Every spiritual force against your relevance, against your advancement, in the name of Jesus, anti-destiny forces, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you came to church tonight, contend in prayer. Some of you are not praying. Pray. Sakatapakatapakatosh. Labranta kaparakatapakatosh. Rakates kebrente kebarantos kedech. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit, every gang up of hell against Koinonia, against Joshua Selman. Oh, you come in one way, you scatter in seven ways. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. Attacks of death, attacks of sickness, mysterious sicknesses that cannot be explained medically. I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I put a seal of the finished work of Christ over that situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. You are still going to pray one prayer before I ask you to sit. One of the greatest areas of attack in this season is your finances. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. It takes wisdom to attract wealth, but it takes strength to retain it. And the strength of the believer is derived in the place of prayer. Lord, I will not laugh and cry at the same time. No, I have cried before. I will not laugh and cry again. Open your mouth and pray, especially over the supplies of heaven. I will not enjoy help us and be left destitute again. Every orchestration to take away help us from your life, to frustrate your finances so that you do not have the liberty to come to church, the liberty to learn the ways of God in peace, challenged by the power of the Holy Ghost. Man of God, pray. Woman of God, pray. Businessman, pray. We contend in the place of prayer. When we pray, we challenge forces, demonic forces, over our destinies, sitting upon the corridors of our destiny. We ward off the arsenals of hell. We establish the power of God over our lives. We give it free way to its manifestation. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Luke 22, 31, 32. Please keep standing. I will still give you the remaining. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, see, you have eyes, but you are not seeing. Satan has a desire. And the desire is to sift you as wheat. 32. But I have prayed for you. Every time I see Satan's desire, what I do about Satan's desire is not to discuss it. What I do about Satan's desire is, to say, is not to say it will not happen. The Bible shows us what we do. That every time we detect Satan's desire over our lives, we engage in the place of prayer. Can I tell you, there are people Satan wants to waste. He doesn't want them to backslide. He wants them to die. Because they have caused too much havoc. And there are people Satan does not want them to cross 2025. It's not about saying God forbid. You forbid it by praying. Open your mouth in one minute and declare that every limitation, every attack over your advancement in the name of Jesus, we curse it by the blood of the eternal covenant. We curse it by the blood of the eternal covenant. We curse it. We dismantle demonic programs over our destinies. We dismantle demonic programs over our destinies. Schedules of darkness, orchestrations of darkness, 
manifesting as bad news, manifesting as evil, we dismantle it. Online are you praying in the name of Jesus, not over my life, not over koinonia, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated very quickly. You will stand up again. So when we pray number four, we contend against spiritual forces that fight our, our destinies. Something happened, I think it was maybe like four months or so ago, was it? We are preparing for the US conference. I had finished praying, I was tired, and then I just lay down to sleep. It was not up to 20 minutes. I just felt like some kind of, um, it was like a demonic presence, very demonic presence within the room. Now, I, I have all kinds of encounters, you have no idea. And as I just sensed that demonic presence, it was almost like a tap to pray again. And I got up with anger. I don't know whether it was related to the conference, but everything on my mind that time was conference. So whatever stands the way, I assume you are interrupting the conference. My God, even in sleep, you can open fire. Yes, Shamakatoskiata. Scriptures, one, two, three, four. While they are moving, you fire with prayer again. Yes, sir. Don't laugh at what I'm saying. I'm teaching you how to win. Prayers. Alanda Kata. Only God knows what that prayer averted. Maybe it was accident. Maybe it was some trouble somewhere. Minus me. Oh, no way. The realm of the spirit will not decide a lot for me and manifest it, and then I become a victim. No way. No way. No way. Listen, the next time you sense when your spirit man gives you a trigger that something is wrong, don't wait till you understand. Even if you are walking on the road, don't worry about what scripture to bring. You just start praying in tongues. The scriptures are already within your spirit. They will start coming out one by one, like arrows, one by one. In the name of Jesus, one by one, as you pray, God will give perspective to what you are praying about. If you don't pray, you can be praying amiss, saying nonsense, whereas the attack is coming this way. Listen, 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 listen. You see, one advantage of prayer is that you can pray even under your breath. You don't have to disturb people. You are the one who is sensing what you are sensing. You don't have to pray only when you are sensing evil. When you are sensing good, you say amen by prayer. Because God is, you are, you are sensing and one of the ways you sense trouble is that your peace is disturbed. One of the ways you sense good things is supernatural joy that does not have any explanation. Sometimes it can be in the midst of things not working. You just know that your spirit has touched something in the spirit. Ah, your spirit has touched tomorrow. That good news is coming into your tomorrow. But you don't just know. You stay in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, the spirit and the bride says come. It must come. It must come by the power of God. Are you learning? Pray. Let's hurry up. We are still going to pray. Number five. Now listen to this one. When we pray, we schedule the needed help for every season. Ah, this is a powerful one. When we pray, I want to show you a mystery now. We schedule through prayer the needed help for every season. Acts chapter 9 from verse 10 to 11. While I was studying, preparing my notes, the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture. I'd never seen it in that light. Watch this. This was Saul of Tarsus, who had now become Paul. Listen. When Paul encountered God, he became blind. And he went to the house of Judah and stayed there. And the Bible says there was a certain disciple in Damascus 
named Ananias. Listen carefully. The Bible says, And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord, verse 11. I like this. He says, And the Lord said unto him, Watch this, Arise and go to the street which is called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Why will you go there as a helper? Read the last sentence. For behold, behold, he did not just go there. The man was blind and he said, Lord, you asked me to preach the gospel. Being blind is unnecessary, but he was praying. And while he prayed in response to his prayer, verse 12, watch what was happening. Now unknown to Paul, his prayer was helping to negotiate something serious here. And the Bible says while Paul prayed, he had seen in a vision. Who did he see? A man. There are times you see angels, but there are times you need to see a man. It was in the place of prayer that he saw help coming. He saw a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he may receive his sight. And Ananias began to argue, verse 13, I have heard of this man, the many things, how that he has done. Watch this. While that is happening, Paul was still praying. Do you know? Watch this. Paul had seen Ananias coming in a vision, but physically, Ananias refused to go. And he was saying, God, I won't go. This man, I've heard of the things he has done. If Paul had stopped praying, Ananias would reject that offer and go away and leave Paul blind there and he would remain there. And if you were to interview Paul, Paul would say, I don't understand. In the place of prayer, I saw a vision that Ananias should come and Ananias has refused to come. It's not enough to see. You must pray it to happen. Many of you saw helpers coming and then immediately you saw it, you stopped praying because you said, since I've seen it, it must come to pass. No. While that is happening, there are still negotiations happening. Ananias refused. I have heard of the many things that he has done. But the Lord said to him, verse 14, let's hurry. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. Who gave Ananias this, the explanation? God. Who else would have given Ananias that explanation? Nobody. It was because God said he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. He said, oh really? I've changed my mindset. Can I tell you? There are some of you, the only person who can explain to your helpers is God. Because the kind of reports they have about you, about your family, about your business, it will be over their dead body to help you. At that point, you need to pray. Who is learning? You need to pray the presence of helpers and say, Lord, it is by yourself you will speak to men. I like what promise says here when it comes to take offering. He says, may God put it in the heart of men to help you. It sounds like a very simple prayer, but it's a very powerful prayer. A rich man will not help you because he's rich. He helps you because God puts your matter in his heart. Are we together? Yes. I remember many years ago, a pastor friend called me and humorously was saying, he said, Apostle, you have to pray for me. I traveled to America and someone saw me and he, was, he had discussed that he wanted to give a seat to Apostle. Can you imagine? And the man tried, tried, tried to make sure that he would bring the seat before my pastor friend would travel and package a very quality seat and gave him. He said, please help me and give Apostle. And when he came, he said, no, this is not fair. This man saw me. Not day one, not day two. Are we together now? This man saw me, oh, he knows that I'm a man of God too. And he told me he would give a seed. And not even that, okay, he gave apostles on then. He said, you're on for apostle and greet him that I've been blessed by his life. So when he came, he was a very nice man. We we're just talking and, and I was saying, well, he said, no, you have to pray that prayer for me. How can somebody give me a seed to come and give you? Oh, my help has come. Oh, I want 
me share with you one story. I won't tell you all of it. Sit down. Many years ago, I was praying, praying seriously. And the Lord spoke to me. Until that time, no one had ever blessed me beyond a certain amount. I'm sharing this to the glory of God to help you. I remember it was in the place of prayer. The Lord spoke to me. And he said, son, the same way I have raised people to support the work, I am going to be putting a mandate on people to support you as an individual, not the ministry, you as an individual. I was happy, but I knew already that if I kept quiet, that word would never come to pass because men are very wicked. And there are times that God will have to impress upon their spirits. Are we together? I remember taking out time to pray. One day, somebody i was praying quite honestly minding my business and then i remember that time i saw an alert and it was quite a generous alert i just thought to myself my god i even left the money there first so that in case i don't want any body to come nobody had sent that kind of amount at once and i said what is this a few months later the same kind of amount came again a few months later, the same kind of amount came again and then it stopped. And from that time, people will say, God has placed it upon my heart. I said, ah, this thing works. So it works. You don't pray alone. Huh? But you see, because we are in the business of priesthood, there is a provision to see that we serve God conveniently as we bless his people. And let me tell you the truth, from that time, I concluded that not all men are stubborn. Lord, leave the stubborn ones and go to the ones that have vowed that you should use them. Don't, that's, you've heard me, I've advised you financially, don't tie your mind to one person and say, Lord, Auntie A, Uncle B must bless me. It's a recipe for disaster. Because an individual can of their will say, I won't help this family, even though I have the means. Okay, we respect your will. Carry your trouble and go. Lord, raise help from another place. And where there are no men, for our sake, raise stones. I'm prophesying to someone, in this season, unexpected sources, for the sake of your focus, your vision, your assignment, may my God raise strange help for you. Strange help for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down. I don't share these stories to brag. Sometimes it's, a, it's very difficult, but it's important to share them sometimes. At least you understand. It is to encourage you. I remember when we were preparing for Sound of Revival, one time I got rich that there was somebody who wanted to be anonymous. And he wanted to find out the amount we were paying for the venue. He wanted to foot all the bills. I said, no, you cannot pay. We've already paid the money for the venue. Even though it was very expensive, but we thank God for the honor of being able to do that. But how does somebody give that kind of amount, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you want to be anonymous? No, we're a responsible ministry. I have to know who you are to tell you thank you. He said, no, the man said he wants to be anonymous. He just wants a way that even though we have paid, he still wants to give the money. Every helper has relatives who are begging and he will not give them. People don't come because they have. They come because their hearts are touched. Are you learning? Nobody gives. Stop saying this man with all the money he has is not giving me. You are wasting your time. Go to the father of spirits in the place of prayer. Lord, every spirit is subject to your word, your name. Place it upon the heart of any man you choose. Raise help for me in this Abuja. I don't want to compromise. Raise help for me. You think God is not faithful to raise help for you? Except it's not the God of heaven. You can call for help in the place of prayer. No job, but pray. You are not lazy. Your CV is there. Now, I hear a lot of talk and sometimes, let me say this, sometimes... Um, we make mockery of prayer and I know what those who say that I know what they mean to say 
you know we make a lot of mockery on prayer we say everything is not prayer 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 I understand that most people say that because of the fanatism that has driven the prayer ministry and the inefficiency that has come from using prayer as the only key so I understand what they are trying to say when it has to do with the economy there is productivity relationships transformation competence value understanding exchange these are valid principles nobody who wants to prosper and just praise alone uh, you are not using the keys effectively but another side again is there are people who have now said no 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 forget about it it's not about prayer it's not true it's not true the Bible says in everything by prayer everything is finance part of everything yeah I've told you that where prayer is not the key prayer becomes the hand that holds the key even if you have a key you need a hand that turns it are we together now so I'm, I'm teaching you I owe it to teach you there are people who literally prayed their way to favor favor brought the resources wisdom multiplied it are we together now don't sit down and you are under fire there are some of you right now who with all due respect maybe you are owing millions of naira tens of millions hundreds of millions of naira you think it's productivity that will take you out productivity will help you start again when you are free what you need is prophecy you need to cry on to god for help otherwise you will die in that pit are we together our last master it was borrowed the men were hard working the purpose of the axe was for them to cut a tree they didn't ask god to cut the tree for them but when the axe fell it stopped because there was no ability to cut the tree again and there was a miracle to restore the axe head after it was restored they now continued cutting you do business when the capital is there when the capital is not there you are stunted you need help you need men you need systems and structures to help you are we together now there are many of us, the hardship around your life is a direct testament that there is no help. No help in ministry, no help in your home. Nobody has been concerned about your welfare nor that of your children. Are we together now? Don't waste your time selecting men by yourself. I have taught you this. Find a way of believing it. Don't waste your time trying to select men. Look on to Jesus and say, Father, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pray that you place it upon the heart of someone. Do you know, till today, I still pray for helpers. I still pray for helpers because I need helpers. The higher the assignment, the higher the help that is needed. In every ramification, financial helpers, spiritual helpers. There are people today, God placed a burden upon them to pray for me as their assignment are we together now as an assignment I'm not saying what you do occasionally as their assignment so when we talk of help we're not just talking of you cannot pray enough for God will raise people raise intercessory groups there are some of them I don't even know them but God has placed it as a burden. Pray for apostle. That is your assignment. Say, Father, send help to my destiny. I want you to pray a minute from your heart and watch what God does. Say, Father, send help to my destiny. Pray that last one before I give you the last key. Please pray. Ah, send help Lord send help I need help in ministry I need help over my finances send help some of you you may not need money but there are other things you need very important things you need that make for life and godliness strategic connections you need help access you need help endorsements you need help the goodwill of strategic people you need help in Jesus name we pray when we pray we schedule the needed help for every season every assignment God gives koinonia has a financial requirement my own upkeep as his child and as his servant has a financial requirement 
it is my responsibility to in the place of prayer call for the needed help if you are too arrogant to call for help then you will find out that it will look as if God sent you and left you alone he says when I sent you lackest thou anything let me tell you the truth I am convinced that for as long as I serve the Lord I will not lack bread to eat I'm not serving him because of bread but for as long as I am on this assignment I will not lack bread to eat I love him whether there's bread or not sincerely but I will not lack bread to eat and that does not just mean bread for myself for everyone that I have a responsibility over I will not lack bread to give are we together this is my understanding with God this is my agreement with God that I love him more than bread but for as long as I'm serving him sincerely with all my heart I will not lack bread to eat it doesn't matter what happens even if the earth is brass and the heavens iron I will not lack bread to eat you have to believe this when I sent you lackest thou anything and they said nothing this is not because I'm a preacher preaching is only a vehicle to serve the Lord when you serve him sincerely he blesses your bread and your water he takes sickness away from you the days that he has a portion for you he sees to it that you fulfill let me give you number six has someone been blessed tonight when we pray our spirits are quickened and we step into a, a realm of discernment when we pray we receive the prophetic blueprint that connects every season to every season when we pray we receive direction strategic direction for the next level when we pray we contend against the spiritual demonic forces that fight the actualization of our destinies that fight prophecies over our lives when we pray number five we schedule the needed help help as men help as advantage of systems number six when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory listen to this and then we pray when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16 when we pray you cannot build capacity if you do not pray Paul prayed over the church in Ephesus that he would grant you the he being God by his spirit according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man someone say strength shout it say strength again say capacity you need capacity within your inner man listen to me the level of anointing that God has placed upon my life now was not the level when we started with him it would be unfair of him to have placed that kind of grace upon my life because my capacity then would not be able to carry and host this level of glory so here's how it works the greater your capacity in the spirit the greater the anointing that God can invest upon you are we together the greater the excelling of the glory that emanates from you the greater the assignment the greater the ease of operation this is how it works the things that were difficult for me yesterday by every standard are now easier to do not necessarily because the challenge is left but because capacity was built in the spirit are we together now yes when you do not build capacity there is a limit to which God can trust you with his program or with the next chapter of your own prophetic program in Christ whatever God wants to do in your life does not just happen at the instance of his will alone it depends on your capacity for some of you God wants to do much but the truth is that you are still at yesterday's level you have not enlarged are we together now you have not broken forth to your left and right back and forth God cannot place greater grace upon your life it is a waste when you pour one drum of oil into one bucket 
you are going to waste one drum minus one bucket. That's what you wasted. Am I right on that? Everything beyond one bucket is going to be a waste. So you have one drum of oil and you pour that one drum into one bucket. The only thing you will have at the end of it is one bucket. Anything beyond one bucket will pour on the ground. That's how many of us are. And so because God is not an author of waste, he will limit growth and limit progress until your capacity gives you space to do the more. When I pray, I ask God to enlarge my capacity. I'm happy and grateful for where he's brought me. But as the mandate, as we continue to unfold another layer of what God is doing in Koinonia, another layer of what God is doing in my life. You see that now? The apostolic ministry is very progressive. As God is trusting us with greater assignments, it is not just the awareness of the assignment, but greater capacity. There is a man of God here, God wants to do so much with you, but the truth is that at your current level, God cannot do much with you. There are certain people God cannot bring to your life. The wisdom, the power, the grace, you do not have that capacity. And so we pray. The Bible says, but ye all, building yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. It says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. Verse 4, 2 down to 4. Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. You must learn to edify yourself. There are times you do not have any prayer language at all you just i mean in any prayer point you go to the place of prayer and you are investing time for growth i have taught you here that among the many assignments of prayer generally speaking the first the greatest of them is for your growth and for your transformation the day i stop praying as a habit as a positive spiritual ritual i have pegged myself at a level and i will never grow again and you see when the challenges outgrow your level of anointing you see that now you make you put god in a position where he's going to have to take the people to another place of help another vessel that is aligned in a greater way now spiritual things and the results we command in the kingdom they look very easy it is because the capacity that is producing them in righteousness is at a level that can trivialize those challenges. If you do not grow as the needs of the people grow, it will get to a point where your spiritual stature can no longer be used to solve their problems. This is the tragedy, respectfully, of many, many men of God. Across this nation, Africa, they became stunted in their growth. The comfort of ministry, a good car, a good house, good honorarium, ease air conditioning system business class luxurious living just eroded the discipline and the passion for prayer and then they found out that they stayed at a level where they are no longer relevant to the needs of those god has sent them to and let me tell you this once you no longer can bless the people god has sent you to they will detect your exhaustion in the spirit they can know that you are exhausted they won't be angry with you, but they know that there's, there's nothing more. This, this man cannot solve the reality of the problem that befalls me. He does not have the grace. He can't take me further from here. My prayer as a man of God is that I never punish you by my carelessness and my refusal to grow. Are we together now? That I do not limit your efficiency spiritually simply because I have refused to contend for greater light, greater growth, greater transformation. The more I am enlarged in the spirit, the more God can trust you with that holy oil. The more God can place that anointing upon your life. I want you to lay your hands on your head and ask the Lord to grant you the grace to pray until you are enlarged. Pray that prayer. To pray until you are enlarged. To pray until you expand. To pray until you are enlarged. That what looks like full oil, by the time you enlarge it, will go down and give space for higher dimensions of that oil to be poured on you. Someone pray. Someone pray. 
grace to pray till I am enlarged. Enlarged in the spirit. Enlarged in wisdom. Enlarged for more power. Enlarged to host greater graces, greater glory. One minute you are praying. Make it a desperate, sincere, passionate prayer. Sape la caparanta que prete que pele que pa. I obtain grace to pray. When we pray, we are enlarged. When we pray, we build capacity. Capacity that allows the more, the more of His glory, the more of His power, the more of His wisdom. A few more seconds, are you praying? We're in a very serious season as a body of Christ. There is a call for greater enlargement. Greater enlargement. God wants to bring greater oil. He wants to pour graces, end time graces, end time anointings. But he's looking for vessels that are enlarged. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now look up, we're wrapping up. When we don't pray, we are not only robbed of this, but there are things that happen when we don't pray. I don't have the time, but I will give you three of them. When we don't pray, number one, we faint. Luke 18, 1. When we don't pray, we faint. The word fainting there is to lose momentum, to lose energy, to lose vibrancy. Your vibrancy in the spirit, your passion in the spirit is sustained by the fire that your prayer life produces. When we don't pray, we faint. Number two, when we don't pray, we die. I don't mean die like spiritual death alone. Literally, physically, we die. You may not see it because you don't die in one day. When we don't pray, it's like a farm with no farmer plowing it. No sowing, no mowing grasses, no nothing. The reason why we die is because the thief killing is part of what he does. He does not only steal and destroy. When we don't pray, we don't ward off Satan and his cohorts and darkness. We will die spiritually, die financially, eventually die physically. Do the experiment. Trouble Satan and don't pray. Save souls. Transform lives. Give to the kingdom. Love the Lord. Make sure that the kingdom goes forward. Then don't pray. It's not only God that knows us. The thief too knows you. If he has not come, it's because he's on his way or you have learned how to restrain him. When we don't pray, we faint. When we don't pray, we die. Finally, when we don't pray, we never birth prophecies. Prophecies fail. I preached a message many years ago why prophecies fail. I gave one reason that time, but I found more reasons now with time. The reason I gave that time was the weakness, the humanity of man. And that is true. But in addition to it, there are many reasons why prophecies fail. It is not just the humanity of man. Prophecies fail because all prophecies are seeds. When prophecies come from the lips of God, they rest upon the womb of time. Something must be done to incubate prophecies until they mature and they are birthed. Are we together now? You nurture prophecy by prayer. You birth prophecy by prayer. So prophecies fail even if you are not exhausted and you do not engage strategically in prayer, you will never be able to birth the program of God. If for any reason God ever told you anything you are sure of, 
and it never came to pass I can tell you in diagnosing that condition spiritually most likely it was because you did not stay with God agreed in the place of prayer to incubate that prophetic word to maturity to fruition and then birthing it in the place of prayer everything God tells you your next assignment is to pray you are not just praying to fight Satan even if Satan is not there the process of praying to birth things is a spiritual technology it is not always about demons when a baby is in the womb of her mother it's not about demons it is the process of growth you nurture it in the place of prayer and when it is the ninth month in the spirit you push through prayer as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth a son a son can mean a vision a son can mean a new dimension a son can mean another level in grace take note of this when we do not pray we faint when we do not pray we die by every definition of death we lose life financially relationally health wise until we finally die because we give the thief access to carry out his ministry in our lives and finally when we do not pray we abort prophecy we do not stay with God to nurture and to birth prophecy to give it physical expression it is for this reason ladies and gentlemen that he spake a parable to the end that koinonia to the end that Joshua Selman to the end that you and your family you and everyone around you that they pray and not to faint rise upon your feet I want you to go back home after tonight's service and take the time to listen to this message again. Don't assume you understood everything I said. And where you think you don't want to hear it, let the message play while you pray. And don't stop praying till the message is over. You can use it. Prayer is not so much about timing. You have been taught here. It is not the time to pray. You are focused on what God is birthing. Are we together now? But sometimes it can be a guide to help you. Trying to provide discipline for you to pray. I'd like you to pray one prayer and then I speak over your life. The grace that you have heard this, that you will not be a victim of it. It will be beyond good preaching. It will be beyond a lecture, beyond a spiritual admonishment. That this will contribute to your efficiency, your rising, your becoming in the spirit. Open up your mouth and pray in one minute. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Give him praise for all that you've heard tonight. Give him thanks and give him glory. Give him thanks and give him glory. When we pray, many things happen. The wonders of consistent prayer. Now finally pray for the grace to pray consistently. Some of you pray, but your inefficiency lies in your inconsistency. Obtain grace to be disciplined in prayer. Obtain grace to practice the ritual of strategic prayer with understanding. Obtain grace to pray. No excuses. Obtain grace to pray. The discipline to pray. To structure a prayer program a prayer system around your life that keeps all these and more happening in your life in Jesus mighty name we pray I'm about to speak over your life but let me make an altar call quickly before I do the speaking I want to give someone an opportunity to run to Jesus when you pray to an unknown God it is still idolatry what gives our prayer value is that we know who we are calling upon the bible says the lord is nigh them that call upon him are we together there were men in the bible who prayed and showed zeal and worship towards an unknown god there are many christians who are praying to a deity we don't pray to a divine being some cosmic power somewhere the prayer of the believer is relational, not transactional. Many faith practices do not need relationship. 
they only fulfill rituals and get returns from it it is purely and only transactional but the believers prayer life is not just predicated on the correct observance of these rituals but a genuine relationship with the one you are calling upon someone came to church tonight and honestly you do not have a functional relationship with Jesus the son of the living God or perhaps you need a renewal you need a restoration of your relationship wherever you are uh, I want to thank you for your patience allowing those who should be saved to come wherever you are we have a minute for you I'd like you to leave your seat you're saying apostle whether you're in Zaria following online or you are here and you're saying apostle give me a minute let me make it right with Jesus genuinely I love you with all my heart and tonight is your night for salvation I count one to five I want you to leave your seat and come right here in front of me don't wait for anyone to be the first Jesus loves you he's calling you to a richer and a fuller life number one two let's celebrate them as they come thank you my brother thank you my sister I see people coming leave him leave him leave him let him since that's what he wants go ahead come keep clapping let's celebrate them you don't have to kneel you can stand the gentleman insisted on kneeling and that's why we allowed him three if you're still coming please run come don't be ashamed this is one big family we're celebrating the hand of God with you that it's a new season for you there's still someone who needs to leave his seat and come come quickly come quickly you're outside you're up the balcony across come quickly if you are not able to make it to the front here you can go to the front of your LED still serves the same purpose come one last count and I begin to pray five I still see a sister running come join them God bless you God bless you my friend hallelujah praise the Lord thank you very much first to all of you every time we make the altar call I wanted to thank you for motivating these people it's not just Joshua Selman leading them to Christ we're doing it together it matters when the Lord is saying thank you to all those who have been saved there will also be a credit to you for being part of this I'm just the one privileged by God to help them make the confession that leads to salvation but because our hearts are together I want you to know that every time souls are coming here it's not just Joshua Selman who is the soul winner every single one for your claps for allowing them for your encouragement you are part of the process leading to their salvation thank you ladies and gentlemen thank you very very much okay I see a young lady coming please join them God bless you my sister God bless you lift your right hand all of you who have come thank you very much for the courage to come and for anyone who is falling online please pray the prayer as I lead this precious one say Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I love you with all my heart I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I'm a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen I pray for you now in the name of Jesus that the hand of God will rest upon you that this declaration truly will cause you to walk in victory all the days of your life I bless you and I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God you go from glory to glory grace to grace in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen God bless you please look to my right that should be your left you will have a word with the counselors and then you quickly return to your seat let's honor them as they go thank you thank you thank you thank you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah 
Praise the name of the Lord. Now let me remind you again that I've been encouraging us, I think in the last two or three weeks, to be more passionate about in-gathering. You will wonder why I'm asking you to be an active part of soul winning and drawing people to the house of God in spite of what God has done in our midst. Um, it's not about crowd and size. It's a mandate. And it is part of our training to be actively involved in soul winning and bringing people to the house of the Lord. This is beyond a passion to increase membership. We have to give people an opportunity to hear the things that you're hearing. And not just for people to participate offline. It's important that you help them know that this is what God is saying. And when it is time for koinonia, not just koinonia here, but any koinonia program at all, including our external ministrations, make sure that you help people connect, that they find life, they find hope. When they are giving their testimonies, they will give credit to God and the Lord himself will bless you too for being a conduit, being part of the stories of these people. So don't rob people an opportunity, your family members, your friends, your sphere of influence, get the teachings across to them. Are we together now? And make sure that your life is an active part of people's knowing the Lord, people's being transformed, finding life, and finding solutions. Now I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to pray and to pray consistently. I release that grace upon you. The grace to pray and to pray consistently. I release that grace upon you. The quickening of the Spirit that sponsors your discipline to stay in the place of prayer until you are transformed, you are changed, till you discern, receive it in Jesus' name. And I pray for you, the benefits that come from prayer, may it be evident in your life. The help that prayer brings, may you experience it in your life. The wisdom that prayer brings, may you experience it in your life. The direction that is obtained in the place of prayer, may you experience it in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, every attack on your prayer life, I decree and declare that that attack gives way now. Everything you see in the place of prayer according to the will of God, may your hands handle it speedily. I declare you blessed in Jesus' name. Your weak beginning is blessed in Jesus' name. The hand of the Lord is strong upon you. His grace is multiplied upon your life. The wisdom of the Spirit is producing results in your life. Your week is full of favor. Your week is full of help. Your week is full of victory. In the name of Jesus, that by Sunday you'll be eager to come and testify. Indeed, you will say, see what the Lord has done. Every crying stops as you step into this week. Shame and reproach comes to an end as you step in this week. For your shame receive double. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Those for the medical people, please, if you are applying for the medical training, please make sure you go to the medical stand. The Lord bless you and see you next week. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.